Today, you'll learn how to remove dark eye circles without damaging texture using frequency separation. Most tutorials give you a recipe. I'll explain the logic behind each step so you can retouch any photo without guesswork. I'm Jesus Ramirez, let's get started. First, I'll show you how to set up frequency separation the right way. Start by selecting your image and pressing Ctrl J twice to create two duplicates of your background layer. Now, hold Shift and click on both layers to select them and press Ctrl G to place them into a group. I will name my layers and groups descriptively to help you understand this technique, but you can keep them shorter if you prefer. I'll name the group Frequency Separation Composite. Then I'll press Tab to automatically jump to the layer below and rename it High Frequency Texture. I'll press Tab again and name the second layer Low Frequency Color and Tone. And it will hold my colors and tones. Now we need to separate the detail from the tone. There are a few techniques to do so, but we'll use the apply image method, the pro standard for precision. It cleanly splits tone from texture, avoids color bleed, and supports 16-bit files. The settings differ between 8 and 16-bit, but no worries, I'll walk you through both. First, disable the high frequency texture layer by clicking on the eye icon, then enable the low frequency color tone layer, and go into filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. This is where the magic happens. Blurring removes texture, leaving only tone and color. You're deciding exactly where the line is drawn, and that's the power of frequency separation. Adjust the radius until fine details like pores and wrinkles disappear, but the overall shapes and color transitions remain. Every image will have a different radius value. A 3 pixel blur might be perfect for a close up portrait, but too low for a wide shot or high resolution image. In this case, 2.4 pixels works. Now, let's work on the high frequency layer. Bring it back by clicking on the space and click on the layer to enable it. Then go into Image and choose Apply Image. This is where the settings differ between 8 and 16 bit images. Let's start with 8 bit images and I'll cover 16 bit after. You can think of this apply image command as a calculator for layers. The goal is to isolate the texture, the missing piece in this equation. Blurred layer plus texture layer equals original image. To find that missing texture information, we simply need to tell Photoshop to subtract the blur layer from the original image. So original minus blurred equals texture, and we can do it all from the apply image command. First, Tell Photoshop where to sample from. Make sure your source is set to your current document. Then, under Layer, choose your blurred layer, which I named Low Frequency Color and Tone. Now let's apply the math. Under Blending, you will see a list of blending modes, which are mathematical equations. Choose Subtract for 8-bit images. Photoshop subtracts the blurred layer from the original image, leaving only the difference between them, and that difference is texture. You'll see the texture of the image against a black background. Those black areas are where there's no change or detail. For this texture layer to blend correctly, we need to turn black into 50% gray. Because contrast blending modes make 50% gray pixels transparent, perfect for blending and creating the texture layer. So we'll set the offset to 128, which adds 128 to every pixel's value, shifting black, which is 0, to 128. And that's 50% gray, making it transparent later on when we blend the layer. Now you can set the scale to 2. The subtraction creates a very strong contrast between brightness and dark areas. Setting the scale to 2 divides the pixel values in half, effectively compressing the intensity preventing the texture from looking too harsh or unnatural when you blend the high and low frequency layers later on. Also, make sure that invert is unchecked. Then you can press OK. Before we move on, let me quickly explain the settings for 16-bit images. But before I get into it, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell so you don't miss any new Photoshop tutorials. So for 16-bit images, we will need different settings. And that's because they hold so much more color information than 8-bit images. 
and Photoshop uses a slightly different mathematical approach to separate the frequencies while preserving all that data. So, in Apply Image, you'll have to check Invert, set the blending to Add, and the Offset to Zero. Think of it as a different path to the exact same cleanly separated texture layer. No matter if you have an 8-bit or 16-bit image, we should all have our texture layer. The next step is to change its blending mode to Linear Light. Linear Light is special because it perfectly reconstructs the original image. It's the only contrast blending mode that reverses the math done by Apply Image while making 50% gray transparent. That's why it's the go-to choice for frequency separation. Now that your image is perfectly separated into tone and texture, it's time for the fun part and we're ready to fix the dark eye circles. And we can do that by using any of the retouching tools. The first step though is to create a new layer so that we don't damage the original high frequency or low frequency areas. So I'll click on the low frequency layer and create a brand new blank layer by clicking on the new layer icon. Then I'll press Ctrl Alt G to create a clipping mask. A clipping mask indicates that this layer on top will only affect the layer directly below it. In this image, we're not going to work on the high frequency texture layer, but if in your projects, if you need to adjust the texture, then follow these same steps with the layer above. Enable the brush tool, then hold Alt to temporarily enable the eyedropper tool and click to set a sample color. Choose a color that is the skin tone that you want to apply. Then simply paint over these areas. Notice that we're completely replacing the color and tone with the color we chose. Unfortunately, this gives you a very flat look and we don't want that. So I'll press Ctrl Z to undo. At this point, if you have a tablet, enable pressure sensitivity so you can build the paint on. If you don't, you can simply bring down the opacity and flow. You can click on this drop down menu and use the sliders to adjust the opacity. I prefer to use the keyboard shortcuts. When you have the brush tool active, if you tap on a number, for example, a number five, opacity will change to 50%. Tapping zero will make it 100%. Tapping two numbers will change it to a specific value. For example, two and five will make it 25%. If you hold shift and do the same thing, you will affect the flow. So I'm holding shift and tapping on eight, which will make the flow 80%. Tapping two numbers at the same time will do the same thing. I'll tap two and five while holding shift to set my flow to 25%. And at this point, when I paint, I'm building the effect on my image. And that's exactly what I want. The challenge here is to select the right colors and tones to remove the dark circles. You can select colors from any part of your image as long as it looks realistic. And of course, let's not forget the other side. I'll continue doing exactly the same process to remove that dark circle. And this is the process holding Alt to sample a new color and continue painting away the dark circles. And while this technique might be a little tedious, it will definitely give you the best results. I'll now click on this retouch layers eye icon to disable it so you can see the original image and our edited version, much, much better. Also, here's the tip. Since our goal is to remove the dark circles, but keep as much of the original skin texture as possible, change the retouch layers blending mode to lighten. It's a subtle effect, but if you pay close attention, you'll be able to see more of the skin texture come through. Because with the light and blending mode, Photoshop only looks at the pixel on top and the one directly below it, and it keeps the brightest of the two. It doesn't blend, so the brighter skin texture comes up and the brush strokes only are applied to the darker eye circles. And here's the trick. Disable the texture layer and look for imperfections with tone. In this case, we have this dark line and I'll remove it by sampling the color from the highlight and I'll paint it away. I'll add a bit of the highlight to the left side as well to better hide those dark eye circles. I'll enable the high frequency layer to see what we have so far. And the best thing about retouching on a second layer is that you can always disable the results so that you can see the original image. And if you are a little heavy handed, you can always erase. So I'm going to increase my brush size by tapping on the right bracket key on the keyboard then I'll hold the tilde key, which is to the left of the number one in North American keyboards, and I can paint away some of these imperfections. I'm not painting them away right away because opacity is set at 25 and so is flow, so I can increase them both to 100. Here's the trick. When you hover over a label, click and drag left or right to increase or decrease the value. 
So at 100% and holding down that tilde key, I can paint to erase my previous brush soaks to bring back some of the original details. And if it was too much, you can always go into edit, fade brush tool, and reduce the opacity or the intensity of that last adjustment until you get something that works. And if you made it this far, like and subscribe.